and run those tests. And there are also things that non-technical users, like myself, uh, can use to set up tests and run them. Those would be the visual editor and something we call live variables. The third tool in the Optimizely toolbox for mobile is code blocks. It's a little bit more technical, and we'll go over that at the end here. Let's get started with the visual editor. So you can see, as I kind of move my, my cursor around this view within the app, different blue boxes appear. These are all elements within the view that I can edit or, or modify. So you know, let's say that, that we're the guilt team, and we have a hypothesis that by changing the color of this button, sign in, from gold to, to green, green for go, uh, that we might get more people to actually sign in. All that we have to do to set up this test is simply select the element that we'd like to edit. You click, and you can see we're given a number of different options. We can change the text. Uh, we can hide the button if we'd like. You can see when I make a change, it's, it's rendered not just here in the mobile and browser, but also uh, in our simulator or in our app. But for now, let's just go ahead and change the background color of this button to green. Green for go. There we go. Great. So in just a matter of you know a minute, we've been able to set up a quick A-B test with our original, with the nice gold button, and our variation one with this green button. All right. Now I just want to highlight again that these are all changes that you can make on the fly. You don't have to push to Apple in order to make these changes. And me, being a non-technical user, I've been able to set up uh, this test very easily. So that's the first tool that we have in our toolbox. What are some of the other things that we can do using Optimizely uh, in our app? The second thing, or the second tool that I'd like to go over is live variables. So the best way to think of live variables is um, you know, a variable or a string that you want to tag uh, that you can update the value of later. A good variable in this guilt app might be discount magnitude. Uh, you can see that we have the regular price and the discounted price. Well, a, a good variable test would be to see, you know, does a 10% discount versus a 15% discount uh, result in A, more purchases, and B, more revenue for our team. Uh, another great use case, you know, if you're uh, a media company or, or an online streaming company, um, if you're familiar with the, the music streaming service Pandora, uh, they have a free platform or a free service and a paid subscription service. On the free service, you're allowed to skip a certain number of songs before they prompt you to upgrade to the paid subscription. Right now, that number is currently seven songs that you can skip. But a good variable test to set up would be, you know, what's best? Three, five, seven, nine? How many skips should we give that user before prompting them to upgrade? That's something that you can also set up using live variables. So, quick recap. The visual editor, live variables, both things that you can use to make changes in between releases or on the fly uh, that non-technical users can use. The third tool within Optimizely's toolbox for mobile is something we call code blocks. And this is something that, you know, whatever you might want to test, whether it's a, a new flow, a new experience, uh, you know, a completely different part of your app, you can code that up, you can wrap it, and you have to push to Apple because we're introducing new code, but once it's in the, the App Store live, you can use Optimizely to either show or hide that specific block of code uh, for you know, a certain percentage of your users, a certain segment, uh, whatever you'd like. So I'll show you an example of that uh, that we have baked into this, this Guilt app right now. So as I navigate through the app, you know, if I wanted to buy this coat, you can see that I'd click or tap purchase item. Uh, it takes me to a shipping screen where I fill out all of my shipping information. I tap next. I enter my credit card information. And finally, I can click purchase. So it's a two-step checkout. Now, say we had a hypothesis that by introducing a one-tap or a one-stage checkout, we might get more people to actually purchase that item. Well, we've coded it up. Uh, we've inserted it into the app. We've pushed it to the Apple Store. Now our app's in the wild. How do we set up that test? All we have to do is come to Code Blocks and select the code block that we want this variation to be bucketed into. So in this example, we'd want the one stage, right? And I'll show you how that would look to a user if we pushed it live. 
we can go back to this coat, we can click or tap purchase item, and there's our one-step checkout. So this is really good not just to, to test different you know, onboarding flows, purchase flows, but also to do phased rollouts. Um, you know, mis risk mitigation is something that a lot of our clients use optimizely for mobile for. Um, you know, if you're rolling out uh, a new feature or a new update, it's good to kind of hide it behind a veil and release it to a certain percentage of your users, make sure that everything is working properly, make sure that it's converting at a higher rate than the old, uh, than the old flow or experience before rolling it out to 100% of your users. All right. So we've gone over the three tools in the toolbox. Um, you know, let's go over the goals or, or goals that we can track within Optimizely. With Optimizely for mobile, uh, we have three different goals. Uh, there's two that will always be standard. The first is average session length, and the second is retention or sessions per visitor per week. But what are some of the goals that we can uh, that we can track that we can ourselves set up? The first is taps. So, you know, in this example of code blocks, uh, the goal for us is to get someone to tap on the purchase button. To set up that goal, it's very simple. All I have to do is, within my simulator, tap the purchase button. The event is logged in this event log. I simply select that event that I'd like to track, give my goal a name, and click Save. Another goal that you can use uh, is the view goal. Did someone land on this view? So, you know, in our example again, we might want to track who actually landed on the view of thank you for your purchase, the confirmation. All that we have to do to do that is again navigate to that view, and you can see it's logged in this event tracker. Simply select it, give it a name, and save. The last type of goal that you can set up is a custom event. So, <clears throat> this is for uh, you know, apps out there who might, you know, for example, have uh, a swipe left or a swipe right gesture that they'd like to track. You can use custom events to see how many times that event is triggered. All right. So the last thing that I want to uh, show before we hand it off to uh, Mark for the, the web portion of this demonstration is the results uh, for mobile. I'll take us to a, a results page right now. Now you can see at the top of the results page, we have a quick summary of our test. We have the number of visitors that were bucketed into the experiment, the number of days it was running, uh, and then of course uh, our variations. In this case, we had a variation named rate, one named love, and one named share. Uh, the number of users or visitors bucketed into each variation, and then uh, our conversion goal, which was a tap on a modal. If we wanted to, to dig a little bit deeper into this goal, can actually come down here. We can take a look at the chart of the conversion rate over time. Uh, and of course, similar to up top, we have the different variations. The number of unique conversions for each variation, we calculate the conversion rate, uh, and then the percent improvement over baseline and the chance to beat baseline. Uh, improvement being, you know, uh, how much how much of an improvement did this did this variation have over the original, which uh, to me is a significant indicator of the strength of that variation, right? Uh, you know, with, with one quick change that we made, we got a 47% increase on that tap. That's significant for us. Uh, and then, of course, chance to beat baseline is essentially optimized least confidence uh, variable. How confident are we that by implementing this change uh, that you will see an improvement over the original? All right? So that's, that's kind of a high-level demonstration of mobile. If you'd like to learn more about mobile, please email sales at. I'd be more than happy to walk you through myself. Uh, but now I'm going to hand it over to Mark, and he's going to walk us through uh, Optimizely's core web capabilities. Hey, and Mark, this is Jody again. Before you uh, hop on in and while you get ready there, uh, there was uh, an abundance of questions uh, surrounding the availability of a uh, similar uh, type of optimization suite for Android. Uh, and so I just wanted to mention to those of you who are interested in learning more about uh, both the iOS and Android products, uh, you can go online and learn more there or contact sales at 
uh, but the Android uh, component is actually in a developer preview. And to sign up to be updated, you can just visit optimizely.com slash Android. Uh, and with that, I will turn it back over to Mark. <laughs>